the best middle class transit. So I, I, let's let's take New York and and DC, Chicago. Let's take it out of the mix and say where is the best middle class transit? And by middle class, I mean uh, the the transit that a typical or even like an, an, an above typical median income family will gladly ride and feel joyous and happy doing it. Where, where is this in North America? And I'm going to answer my own question. Okay. It's at Disney world. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been, but ridiculous. I, I sit and watch people because I'm, I'm fascinated by the transportation system. You know, you've got the monorail, you've got boats, you've got buses, they have high frequency, they have reliability, they drop you off right at the door, they deliver you from destination to destination. And the fascinating thing about it is that people who would in normal circumstances absolutely despise and, and fight against and, and, and you know, devalue the types of investments that deliver that pay you know, massive amount, like insane amounts of money to go and live for a week in Wonderland, <laughs> literally not Wonderland Road, but literally <laughs> Wonderland, where they can go from a high density living place uh, with you know mixed use development, get on a bus, <laughs> uh, go to a shopping area, get on a bus, go to a recreation area, and they do it with ease and they pay a premium to be able to do it. Yeah. I, I, I don't feel like this is the broken humans uh, rejecting this lifestyle. I feel like this is the humans rejecting what has been delivered to them, but also being kind of force fed a diet of auto oriented type of design. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the, the auto oriented and go and react yeah. to that? And, and well, I think there's, kind of there's two things I would say to that. Um, the first, and I hear this all the time in transit discourse in North America. The first is that People make the assumption that because a certain type of transit does not work where they live, that type of transit does not work. That is right. a very, very common thing. Like people will say like, oh, come on, you know, I, I, it'll take me two and a half hours to take the bus, but I could drive there in 35 minutes. Therefore, buses are terrible. And I'm like, no, the way that your city has been designed and the way your tran transportation infrastructure is designed is terrible. Buses work just fine in lots of places in the world. And so do trams and so do trains and everything else. Um, and it, it really does come down to this. Um, oh, sorry, the other thing I was going to say about the Disneyland is that I constantly hear from North Americans who go to on vacation to Europe and they have such a lovely time. And you hear them talk about it and like, oh, there was this great cafe just down the street from our hotel. And we got on the, you know, the tube or we got on the tram and it took us right to this wonderful little place. And, you know, and then they come back to their strode lined hellscape as i like to call it and uh -huh. uh, and and they fight you know for every last parking spot and you know every hey target lane. has a starbucks now yeah i know right <laughs> and it's it's just it's there's this there's this this mentality there that that oh that's there and this is here and we can't be like that and you hear it also in the discourse it's like oh, oh europe's old and, you know, they have these medieval streets, so of course they could do this. Well, you know, most of Amsterdam was built after 1960. Uh, the right. vast majority of the land area of, of Amsterdam was built after 1960. We have the towns of uh, Almera and Lelystad that were built on reclaimed land. They were both built in the 1980s, and they're not like this. I mean, it's, it's not about that at all. Um, but, but people get it in their heads that this is there and that is there, and, you know, it, these things have to be different. Um, but it really does come down to the choices that have been made to make things car centric. 